So yay! Um, so this is the uh, the the cut one flower. This is actually the um, the first flower you're going to see. Maybe we should introduce ourselves. I'm I'm Marielle. I'm the one who's actually embroidering this. So manami ako sa sabihin tungkol dito. But I'm here with Cynthia, who is actually the illustrator um, who's inspired uh, this embroidery. Hopefully, the start of this embroidery series, and, and it's so many others. Because yes, <laughs> I mean, I think the rise in popularity of these flowers is is mainly because of of uh, the collaborations you've done with so many other makers. Mm-hmm. So, uh, this is the um, this is a tutorial okay. on how to do the katman flower. So, the katman flower is the the biggest flower in this embroidery hoop. Um, it's the, the flower with white or cream petals mm-hmm. and a rather wild center. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to talk about the stitches that we're going to do, okay. siguro, um, in a bit. But maybe Cynthia, you can share more about the Katmon flower now. Katmon, okay. Oh. So yun. Hi, I'm Cynthia, and I'm excited to. Um, to work with Marielle for the first time here. <laughs> so here, I'm gonna tell you more about the flower. The Katmon is actually a native flower to the Philippines. Actually, it's a native tree. It's a native tree. And it has showy white flowers, which is the one that Marielle is embroidering right now. It has large white petals. And the stamens are a mixture of orange, maroon, and red, and you will, which you will see um, later. Um, in the later in the video, but right now Marielle is doing the white flower, um, white petals with the crinkled edges, and um, it's got a, some texture, some it's kind of texture that's part, it's like a parang like crinkled fabric. So they are so bringing it over back to Marielle now, so she can describe the stitches. Okay, thanks, Cynthia. So tama ka. actually the, the the term you used showy white flower. Showy. So they are, they are, these are showy They are showy. Yeah, because they're so pretty. Look, yeah, because when you see the tree, you see the flowers. They're, they're really big. Eh? They're not like small clusters. They're like really big, showy, individual flowers. And, and, and they come in clusters. And no, no, they don't come in clusters. They're like individual, individual. large individual flowers. Yeah, that's why, that's why. It's probably why it's written as showy in some of the books. Ganda nga ni. Ganda so na. since I know, this is um actually she yung pinaka showy nga din sa sa piece. <laughs> but um, it's the biggest one, and I think folks embroidering this might be a little intimidated at first, but. Uh, the petals are actually really easy to to do. It gets a little more complex in the middle, um, but the petals themselves are just comprised of of, of two stitches: the chain mm-hmm. stitch, which is what I'm doing now, and then a modified stem stitch, which is what I used for highlighting the edges and as well as um, putting in the the grooves. I'll explain later why I call it a modified stem stitch. But so right now, um, since the surface area of the petal is relatively big, I didn't want to just to explain uh, the choice of embroidery stitch. It's kind of tempting to put it as a, a satin stitch, but you know a lot of things can go wrong with a satin stitch because of when the surface area is big, you really have to think about how you're going to divide certain spaces. But chain stitch is 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 great because one. It has a beautiful texture, and um, you can cover a lot more ground. But one approach lang that similar to how you do actually do the satin stitch is first just in order to establish, siguro where the direction of stitches. It's similar to how the illustration is here. Um, it's good to lay down siguro some directional directional stitches first so if you noticed earlier i did the center about three towards the center and after that i started stitching um in the direction 
from the center outwards to the sides on different areas of that um, long center. So you'll, if you have an explanation ko verbally, you can refer to the illustration to see how that actually went. So you'll see how at the beginning, it's just the, the, the lines in the middle. And then you'll see it fanning off to the side. And then just filling in the middle of, uh, of those lines that fan off to the side, like what I'm doing right now in the video. So it's just filling it in. So that at least it's easier this way. So you tackle the petal section by section. So, so you and it's um yeah. So the, the the chain stitch is um it's a fairly it's a fairly simple stitch. It's actually a beginner stitch, but it looks um I think it looks it's really nice because of the texture. Yeah. And I think in the end result of this this hoop, I was really happy with with how it turned out because when you actually move the hoop around in the light, you can see the the light bounce off the the texture of the the chain stitches. And because it's done in such a way that it has this direction, like the the standing out from the center kind of direction. You really appreciate more how the uh, how how the petal looks. So that's you know, that's uh, one thing I was pretty pretty happy with. So from the video, you can see how the basically how the the chain stitch works. Um, starting off with making a loop, and then you put your um, over there starting off with making a loop you put it back where you began and then you just tuck the end behind the needle so that there it creates that kind of loop and to continue the chain you just just keep going put it back in the middle and then um, do that whole loop again and um, yeah it's continuous so it um, it actually consumes less embroidery thread than a satin stitch. This is also it's also great because um, I think more of the thread and more of the texture stays on top. Wherein as as if you use a satin stitch, it's like you're really making the piece super thick. You know, if you look at what the chain stitch looks like at the back, it's actually it looks like a back stitch at the back. So it's just that. So you win. So while I know, so this this one takes a, a bit of time. We were we were talking about the katmon tree and the, the plant earlier. Yeah. You're sharing earlier, Cynthia, about um about yeah. some of its uses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the katmon, right? So it's actually I, for, I forgot to say earlier it's endemic to the Philippines. Which means it's it can only be found here in the Philippines. So and it's got a lot of uses in Katmon. So Gilensha, it's not just an ornamental tree. It's not just known for being pretty. It's it also has some uses. For example, it has fruit bears fruit and the fruit can be used to make jellies or sauces. And even the fleshy sepals of the fruit, they can be eaten and used to make cough syrup. And even shampoo. <laughs> so yeah, it's very, very many surprising uses for the katmon. And then the bark, naman, the bark of the tree, it yields red dye, and the wood can oh. be used for general construction. So for oh, wow. for, for furniture making and for boards and plywood. And the good thing is the katmon isn't really isn't is still ano, it's not non-threatened naman siya. So there are still some katmon here in the country. It's not threatened by deforestation so but it's it would be nice if, if they're more propagated across the philippines so yeah this is it's Just not a lot of basis it, it, it doesn't have to live in the forest does it no, <laughs> Sorry, no. It's just no just there's some in, <laughs> yeah yeah there's some in up there's some in that I've, I've seen some in in, in, uh, in parks here in the in Garden city 
And so yun. So it doesn't have to live in the forest naman, or at high elevations. You can live here. But there are some species, there are, there are a lot of Katmon species there. There are some that have yellow flowers. And then I have one actually. It's, uh, it's got yellow flowers. But it's a Sibuyan native. But this one, the one we're doing, is the Philippinensis. It's called Delenia Philippinensis. So this one is, I think it's the flagship, <laughs> the flagship Katmon um, species. Found only in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, that, that's cool. Um, yeah, I, I think I saw a picture of, of your Katmon plant and I, and I inquired now also. I wanted to get the one, but I wasn't able to get it just yet. Um, but yeah, you, you can get a dwarf one for your balcony, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm, so a potted one. Think, yeah. A potted one. Mm, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, for all the aspiring plantitas and plantitas, you can adopt the Philippine, mm. a dwarf Philippine forest tree. <laughs> I think they grow it. Eh. So, maybe if you transfer them to the soil, it might grow into a tree. So, I'm, well, I need to check. Yeah, but there are some smaller varieties. The red dye of the bark, particularly interesting. I know. It's interesting, huh? And even the wood, you can use them for. Baka yell, baka you can use them for <laughs> carpet, diba? for some woodworking projects. So oh, the, it, 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 I think it would hurt my heart to 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 down a tree true. that I saw exactly. grow. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so I'd rather just shave some of the bark off, maybe mm. enjoy the fruit. Yeah. So anyway, um, here is uh, this is already the doing the outline. So this is using one of the shades of green in the kit, and um, it's this is what I would call the the modified stem stitch because the the output looks like a stem stitch. But um, because it's so fine, it's actually really small. Um, one stitch of that, I, I, uh, I would say, is about um, a fourth of a centimeter. Um, oh, sorry, when you see that happening, <laughs> that means it's a little challenging to push through because, you know, folks who embroider will know this. It, when the thread becomes thick, um, it becomes a little harder to push through and pull through. So you'll see you'll see uh, quite a bit of that later on because I, I, I think, whoa, did you hear that? There was like, I filmed this towards the end of the whole piece. And um, and yeah, the, 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 the backside of the hoop was pretty thick at this point. So anyway, so this is a, a modified stem stitch. So if you'll notice um, a regular stem stitch you actually come back. It, it is like a, a, a back stitch, as you pointed out earlier. It is like a back stitch, the regular um, one. But instead of coming out where the stitch ends, you actually come out in the middle and and, and pull the, the the thread of the previous stitch to the side just to allow the needle to come out. But for here, I'm doing it in reverse, so that's why it's a modified stem stitch. And I'm only doing it in reverse because, as I mentioned, the stitches are so small, it's tedious. It's too tedious to actually pull it aside or to, to pull it aside to allow it to come out. But you know, if you if you if that's how you regularly do your stem stitch, by all means, please do it the way you want to. Um, this modified stem stitch is by no means uh, uh, an industry standard, so to speak. So you do what um, you do. You do what's comfortable for you. And um, yeah, all all I'm after with a stem stitch is that whole elegant slanted look. The thing is, I, I have no. Um, whereas you, you can also actually use a um, a back stitch, but then I prefer how more flowing or continuous a stem stitch looks as opposed to a back stitch. It lends more to curves rather than um, unintended angles. Like when you use a stem stitch, stem stitch to like a back stitch. So yeah, that's why I prefer a, a stem stitch. So uh, after doing the outline around the Katman flower, just some directional lines, like in the middle, you can see with the other petals, and then there are also these lines to the sides, which may not be that noticeable actually, but I don't know. I don't know. You're gonna know that they're that they're that they're there. 
um, there to show the the crinkledness of the petals, sana. Um, and I guess in some way, I would like to think it it it, it does contribute to that. Um, so just some additional lines. At this point, actually, your petal is already covered, so it's really up to you where you want to put these little crinkled lines. Um, there are some markings on the print on the fabric, and um, I think there are also markings on the, the stitch guide itself that you can refer to also if, in case you're kind of lost, you don't know where to put the crinkles. But generally, they come in the the, the parts of the flower that have uh, that have grooves that are uneven, so they're they're all over the flower. And for this particular uh, piece, I just put them in bunches of twos or threes in random areas on the sides. So if you feel like freestyling it, you totally can. So you would. Yes. Let me. So you can continue uh, to watch this. <laughs> yes, Cynthia, you wanted to, I know. Sure. Share something. I'm sorry, I was, uh, I just saw because I said earlier it's non threatened. It's actually um classified as a vulnerable species. Oh okay. Which means yeah. For, yeah. So it's a vulnerable so it's classified by um the DNR as a vulnerable species, which means um it's threatened. So <laughs> so oh, okay. there, are, there are very few that left. So if we don't yeah. Yeah, so hopefully more Katmon trees will be planted and and grown so that they won't annoy. they won't disappear. Oh yeah, guys, adopt the Katmon tree. Mm-hmm. Um, the are there no? Yeah. How can how can people support the propagation of more of more Katmon trees? So maybe you know, look for seeds, buy seeds from trusted suppliers, or join native tree enthusiast groups. So there are some people there who I know who share seeds, so they or they let you adopt seedlings or they, yeah, like that. There's some shops that sell legitimate shops that sell and um, native tree seedlings. So hopefully, maybe if we can find cut more, we can help propagate and plant it, plant more of it in parks and um, yeah. forests. Oh, it'd be so it's be so sad to see the sad yeah, yeah. It's this beautiful flower and tree disappear. Yeah. And it's endemic, so it means it's only found here in the Philippines. So sad like, if we lose it. So the sad. Although that's I think it's become more sobering. popular these days, no? Parang, a lot, I see a lot of people um adopting Patmon or planting it. So hopefully hopefully naman magapan. Maybe Kailangan ko na ituloy yung pagbili ng Katmon tree na yun. Yeah, yeah, go! <laughs> right? Go na, go! <laughs> yeah, maybe, you know, I'll, I'll try to look for where we can we can put, we can flash on the screen down below where yeah, the folks yeah. can, um, the Instagram. I think I was just messaging someone on Instagram yeah. the Katmon tree because I saw it in your account. Yeah, I bought mine from Phil Native Trees. It's called Phil Native Trees. Yes. Yes, there. Phil Native Trees. I have a, an, I have an, a discontinued have conversation with them. <laughs> I'm adopting mm-hmm. a Katmon tree. And they're not that expensive, the dwarfed ones. Oh, no, no. I bought my Katmon Kalabaw. It's, a, um, it's one of the species, one of the varieties. For only 150 Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's <laughs> That's really cool. so and they're very resilient to our local weather because it's that's the nature of native trees. Eh? So even if typhoon season or summer or during the summer, so I'm not really good at taking care of plants, but I managed to, right? <laughs> I make it one, managed to survive like eight months under my <laughs> under my care. So feeding to it will be easy, man, to take care of. Oh, that's the beauty of native trees. Great. Mm-hmm. That's great to know. Very easy to take care of. So um, at this point, I actually started on the center, and um, as you can see here, it's um, it's it's a number of different. Well, yeah, a number. It's actually black, yellow, gray, and a deep red, sort of like the maroon. And um, it's a combination of uh, these are actually uneven. Um, 
actually, I, I, I was at I, I was at a bit of a loss to to classify this because I would still call it a satin stitch. It's not exactly long and short stitches, or they could be, but they are these uneven stitches because if you look at the the, the drawing itself, or or even the the stitch guide, the the center and um, the different sections are all uneven. Um, so you have a really deep dark center, so that's why we use black. And then we have um, yellow, and later on we're gonna finish that center with gray before putting in the, the stamens and some other French nuts um, that you'll see later also. So I have to double check how I classify this because we the long and short stitch. So yes, do not um, if if uh, if uh, the repeated pressing of the needle makes you a little dizzy, you can look away. But I just really wanted to set your expectations because, as I mentioned, towards this is towards the end, and actually. Um, at this point, you could be feeling, oh my gosh, I just want to finish this project. It's almost done and you're almost there. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it can get a little harder only because the back, uh, the threads at the back are thicker. So, and because um, this, the, the stitches here are so uneven, so sometimes they overlap. And that also contributes to the additional thickness of uh, the piece itself. So here we have gray. So you can see we started off with black and yellow, and we have gray. And um, all of these stitches overlap at some point because you know they are not even. If you'll notice, see, I'm stitching in the middle of the yellow already. So it's um yeah, it's really that kind of effect. Can you hear that thunder? <laughs> Sorry, there's thunder. Um, thunder. Yeah. Can I just share that you know, I love how you interpreted the center of the Katmon? Because in reality, um, the stamens are maroon, the dark maroon. Uh -huh. But using yellow and gray and then black makes gives it gives the this artwork depth so if I made depth and so yeah it's a nice interpretation of the that wild center the metro metro artistic license, artistic that, license as, as we yeah. mentioned yeah say if you look at if you compare it to an actual katmon flower it's like it's not in the exact as I was telling Cynthia um a little earlier I had originally done that gray part in red, <laughs> but I had to take it all out because when I was finished, it was just too intense because the red was solid and yeah, it looked like the eye of Mordor. Like, oh no, the all seeing eye. Um, so I, I had to take it all apart and, and, and use uh, another neutral color instead. And then instead use the, the maroon or the red as a highlight so that it won't come off as so intense. Um, and, and that's just, you know, how an artistic interpretation of it. Of course, nature does such a much better job. <laughs> it looks that nature is perfect in the way it, it, it fashioned the Katman flower. We're just trying to approximate this in, a, in embroidery. If you were doing um, in, in the same way how you interpret your illustrations, but I think yours are closer to really how they look. It's just a, a bit of a challenge working with uh, the different thread, solid the colors and, yeah. and thread. Yeah. The different so, of at some point after I removed them, um, after I cut off all the red, so here it's so thick, you can see me uh, <laughs> repeatedly pushing in that needle. And that needle that's included in the kit is actually not uh, a typical embroidery needle it's a it's a it's a fairly large darning needle so it has a very sharp edge end actually if you look at embroidery needles they're typically a little blunt but i 
but I really uh, but I specifically put intentionally put that darning needle in the kit because for one it's it's actually easier to handle because it's bigger and another is that because of the nature of the stitches that we're doing so it's it's satin it's um, long and short it's a it's a different it's an assortment I think having that sharp really sharp tip helps especially at yes. some points here so at, at a certain point it becomes so hard to to push down with my fingers alone I started using um, that's actually my scissors I started using my scissors to push it down and um, it's not just pushing it down there's also a lot of wiggling so this can be a bit of a challenge depending on what kind of embroidery hoop you also use um, or at least how you hold it how you hold it so but but guys i'm sure i'm sure you can you know okay yeah, yeah. and when you stitch in sometimes some of the, the the threads or the fibers pop back out and um i cut that one specifically because i already tried feeling the underneath normally because when a fiber pops out you you feel it with your finger underneath or you look at the back just to see and start pulling just to see where that stray fiber came from. But if you really can't find any, and sometimes you can't because it's so thick and down there, you, you have no recourse but to just cut cut that and you know, that uh, stray fiber. Don't worry, it won't unravel them entirely because usually the stray fibers come from the the ends of um, other other strings or other threads. So the stamens here um, are in a, a semi arc. A little arc and um, they're done in that modified back stitch like before well we actually we're actually filling in 30 minutes so that's already <laughs> so, so guys these are just a note recorded at home <laughs> just to let you know Cynthia and I are just um <laughs> Having fun. Having fun, I hope. Watching the video. <laughs> the video. Um, it's actually so here, a thunderstorm happening. <laughs> I know, but here, but here, mm -hmm. also where I'm at. So I, I don't know if folks are going to hear maybe, it. Maybe but not. Hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully not. Um, so here are the watch. French knots. The French knots are going on here. I'm glad they're fun to watch. Maybe people will just watch them for fun. <laughs> Malang ASMR ano na, oh. na. but we'll, we'll we'll put in some 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 music. Some music. <laughs> so the, the the French knots are um, actually relatively random, but you can refer to the stitch guide just to see where to place them to give you an idea. But sure, you can pull your you know, um, use your artistic uh, sensibilities to see. It just it's just a smattering or a sprinkling of of of, uh, of French knots all around, and just to add to um, the beauty of its um, non symmetry, so this speaks or probably to make it more not symmetrical but balanced. Um, it's a combination of larger French knots, so that's in three ply and the smaller French knots. So this is two ply. So these are the smaller French knots that we're putting in place. And those smaller French knots are actually pretty fun to 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 just sprinkle around the larger French knots just to add um just to add I don't know a little uh, accents or yeah yeah just to make I, it I, organic no Okay. Yes, exactly, exactly. Just to make it look more organic, um, because it's it's you know it's a, it's a beautiful, uneven, wild centering, as so to speak, and um, having uniform <laughs> bunches of uh, bits of French knots just doesn't do it justice. You got to add those smaller, uneven ones. So the um, the. the Illustrated flower. Sorry, I'll just finish this one. The illustrated flower on the side just shows, um, like the, the direction 
of some of the, the statements. It's just um, a general guide also in case. And the French ones. Sorry, Cynthia, you were saying? Oh, oh no, no. I was just going to say that even while, um, even while making art, um, I think it's one of the rules that they follow. Parang nothing in nature is perfectly symmetrical or something like that. Parang, di ba? Kasi organic yeah. like some, like, not, di ba? Parang hindi siya mechanical. It's all organic. So, yeah, like with this, like with what you're doing here, it doesn't have to be like perfectly balanced. You just you know, scatter them all around. Some can be closer, the right? Some of the dots, some of the knots can be closer to each other. Some can be far apart. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, That's nature for you. It's nature. <laughs> so, so yeah, I think these are just the finishing uh, French knots. Pardon the lack of focus. <laughs> Hard to, to film yourself and switch at the same time. But there, there you go. All done. Yay! So pretty. <laughs> How long so did it take you to finish this in real in real uh, I mean in reality? Um gosh. How long did it take me? Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know. I can send that on off shot. But the petals are the first things that I did. I just left mm-hmm. one petal to film the lens so that folks can be guided in the process.